Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video series, I will be talking about measurement system analysis. These video series include four parts. The first part was about the stability of measurement system. The second is about bias. And the third part is about the linearity in the measurement system. And the last part is gauge R&R. Let's dive into the bias in measurement systems. Okay, we trust on measurements to tell us when our process is operating correctly, when there is a problem, or when we have made an improvement. When we take a measurement, we often assume that the measurement result is true value of our sample. Unfortunately, this is not true. Measurement systems, like any other process, are subject to variation. These are all sorts of variations in measurement systems that we will discuss in details in these video series. So you will not always get the same result when you run a sample again or take another temperature or a pH measurement again. So the question is, how do we provide measurements that are meaningful? This question will be answered in these video series. In this video, we will focus on bias of the measurement system. So, what is the bias? Bias is the difference between the true value, our reference value, and the observed average of the measurements on the same characteristic on the same part. Bias is sometimes called accuracy. Accuracy is qualitative term referring to whether there is an agreement between a measure made on an object and its true value, I mean target or reference value. But bias is a quantitative term describing the difference between the average of measurements made on the same object and its true value. Bias can be eliminated or reduced by calibration of instruments. Errors that contribute to bias can be present even where all equipment are properly calibrated and under control. Temperature probably has the most potential for introducing this type of bias into the measurements. For example, a constant heat source will introduce serious errors in dimensional measurement of metal objects. Accuracy and bias refers to the absolute correctness of the measurement system relative to golden sample or our gauge block. Bias represents a measure of the systematic error of measurement system, like instrument needs recalibration, improper calibration, or worn equipment, or damaged master or golden sample, temperature or humidity. These are the source of the bias. The procedure for conducting a study to determine if there is a bias in the measurement system is given here. At step one, it is important that the measurement system to be stable when the bias study is done. To learn more about the stability of measurement system, please watch this video to learn how to determine the process stability. The second step to perform bias study is you must have a reference with a known value. You would like to compare your measurement system to a traceable standard. For example, a scales often have a weights that serve as a standard. Third step is to run the sample at least 10 times using one appraiser or operator and the measurement system in the normal manner and record the results. The more times you run the sample, the greater the accuracy of bias study. The results can be analyzed in two ways. First, graphically using a histogram as shown here. Or numerically by developing a confidence interval around the average and determining if the interval contains zero. Look at this set of data in Excel sheet. 
An engineer wants to assess the bias of a measurement gauge that is used to measure inner diameter of bearings. The engineer chooses one part with inner diameter of 4 mm. One operator randomly measures the part 15 times. The engineer wants to determine if the micrometer has any bias. The first step is to make a histogram of the results. This histogram is shown here. The histogram shows that the diameter results are spread out around the reference value of 4 mm. And this indicates that there is a no bias present. To further assure that there is a no bias present, the engineer needs to construct a 95% confidence interval around the average diameter of 4 mm. If the confidence interval includes 4 mm, our reference value, the engineer can assume there is a no evidence of bias being present. Here are the steps to construct these confidence intervals around the reference value. First, determine the average of n equal to 15 diameter result. The second step is determine the bias. Bias is equal to x bar minus the reference value. The third step is determine the standard deviation. The fourth step is determine the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom here is n, which is 15 minus 1, equal to 14. 14 degrees of freedom. Step 5 is determine the alpha level, the confidence coefficient that you want. Alpha is 0 0.05. Find the t-value from the t-distribution for degrees of freedom of 14 and alpha equal to 0 0.05. From this table, degrees of freedom is 14 and alpha is 0 0.5. The t-value equals to 2.145. Then you need to calculate the upper confidence limit. The upper confidence limit is equal to x bar plus t value multiplied to a standard deviation divided by root square of n. Similarly, calculate the lower confidence limit. Lower confidence limit is equal to x bar minus t value multiply to a standard deviation divided by SQRT of n. Since the confidence limit contains reference value of 4 mm, the engineer concludes that there is no evidence of bias. Now the engineer runs the sample bearing with 2 mm internal diameter 15 times with another caliper and record the result in Excel. The histogram shows that the diameter results are spread out like this graph. This indicates that there is a bias present in the measurement system. To further assure that there is a bias present, the engineer constructs a 95% confidence interval around the average diameter result. If the confidence interval does not include the reference value of 2 mm, the engineer can assume there is evidence of bias being present. Here are the steps to construct these confidence intervals around the reference value. First, determine the average of n equal to 15 diameter results. Second step, determine the bias, which is x bar minus the reference value. Step 3. Determine the standard deviation. Step 4. Determine the degrees of freedom, which is 14. Determine alpha level. In this example, is 0.05. Step 6. Find the t-value the, from the t-distribution. 
for degrees of freedom of 14 and alpha equal to 0 0.05. Then calculate the upper confidence limit, which is x bar plus t value multiplied to a standard deviation divided by root square of n. Next step is calculate the lower confidence limit, which is equal to x bar minus t value multiplied to a standard deviation divided by root square of n. So the engineer concludes that there is an evidence of bias in these caliper. All right, in this video, we covered the measurement system bias the second part of these video series. Thanks for watching. We are going to release video series on different topics including application of statistics in manufacturing and quality control, robotics and mechatronics, industrial machine vision, system dynamics, finite element analysis with abacus, GDNT and tolerance analysis, and many other interesting topics. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to get notified when a new video on this topic is released.